There are two issues at heart of the uh, Conservative Party identity moving forward. The first is the role of ethnicity, and the second is the role of um, immigration. And they, they are tied together, of course. Uh, the rise of ethnic minority politicians within the Conservative Party, particularly those like Priti Patel, Suella Bravman, and Rishi Sunak, has sparked a complex debate about the role of representation in advancing or hindering racial justice. And while the increased diversity in British politics is a sign of progress, it doesn't necessarily translate to policies that support or benefit minority ethnic communities. And some of these politicians have been at the forefront of implementing harsh immigration policies that disproportionately affect other minority groups. And this raises an important point. Representation alone does not guarantee an alignment with the broader interests of ethnic minorities. Many of these politicians have embraced a model minority narrative celebrating personal success through adherence to traditional British values. And as a result, they've justified tough policies such as the Illegal Migration Bill, which are viewed as repressive by many within minority ethnic communities. And the presence of these politicians provides cover for policies that would traditionally be criticised for their racial undertones. And by positioning themselves as proof of meritocratic progress, they sidestep criticism of policies that harm vulnerable immigrant populations. In fact, their ethnic backgrounds shield them from allegations of racism, allowing for harder stances on immigration and race to be normalised in political discourse. And this is a political discourse which can be traced back to, in various forms, back to Enoch Powell in 1968 with the Rivers of Blood and David Cameron in the early part of, the, of this century with his claim to limit migration to the tens of thousands. And I, I think this is very interesting, that the, 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 the effect of the anti-immigration rhetoric in, uh, on our society and on the Conservative Party. I think it is one of the things that has destroyed the Conservative Party, and it's going to be very difficult to rebuild it if it continues to bicker on about immigration. Uh, once heralded as a strong political stance, particularly the, in the era of Brexit and post-2016, these populist movements, the extreme language surrounding immigration has seen pushback even from prominent conservative figures. And one striking example now, uh, he's not the only one, but he's one of the few to have put his head above the parapet, is Lord Timothy Kirkhope, a former immigration minister who's publicly expressed regret over the inflammatory language, the inflammatory rhetoric used by the present Conservative Party, particularly during the leadership of Rishi Sunak. And the slogan, Stop the Boats, prominently featured by Sunak, coined by uh, Boris Johnson, uh, prominently featured in 2023, was intended to crack down on illegal immigration and boat crossings in the English Channel. However, Lord Kirkhope believes that the aggressive nature of the rhetoric contributed to the violent riots witnessed um, in particularly the north of England during the summer of this year. And Lord Kirkhope's uh, criticism reflects a broader concern that such political language can have unintended harmful consequences. Hull, um, Rotherham, Southport. He notes that while all political factions, including Labour and the Conservatives, agree on the need to control illegal immigration or to or to, um, yes, to discourage illegal immigration, the manner in which this issue is addressed has had a polarising effect. And he puts it, I regret very much that sort of rhetoric which was uttered from time to time by the previous government and has been used by those who wanted to disrupt society and riot and cause all the problems that we have seen. I think we needed to have defined illegal migration more accurately, which is people who have been rejected by the system rather than by the way that they got to the country, which is in defiance of the 1951 Refugee Convention. I've said this so many times and there will be the usual trolls coming back at me and saying I don't understand the 1951 Refugee Convention, but I've talked about it endlessly and I don't intend to 
rehash all that stuff here. The points um, to a clear internal tension within within the party are clear, uh, and and Lord um, Kirkhope is making is is um, is, is directing uh, people to that issue. The internal tension. So, um, and, and I think it's interesting that he's talking about this because uh, you often get the impression if you read the Daily Mail or the Telegraph that this is a done deal, this is a com uh, th this is a finished subject, or if you listen to Kemi Badenoch, Badenoch, or to Suella Bravman or Pretty Patel, you think this is a done deal. It's not. It's not at all. Um... And uh, his uh, Kirkhope's remarks can be seen as part of a wider conservative backlash against right-wing elements in the party that favour hardline, emotive, divisive language on immigration in line with Reform UK. His plea for self-restraint and careful consideration of words suggests a deeper anxiety about how the immigration, the anti-immigration stance has been co-opted by extreme elements within our society. And Kirkhope is not alone. There are growing voices among traditional conservatives who are alarmed at the consequences of this divisive rhetoric. Dr Mick Wilkinson, a criminologist and expert in social justice, has gone even further and suggested that aggressive anti-immigration sentiments, particularly when driven by politicians and tabloid newspapers, have fostered an environment where hatred is stoked often unchecked. Wilkinson points to figures like Suella Braverman, the former Home Secretary, who, inf who frequently invoked hostile language regarding asylum seekers and migrants who shamelessly pilloried the Albanian community and the Pakistani community without facing any legal or political consequence because she was standing at the dispatch box. Shame. Wilkinson's critique of the imbalance where ordinary people are sentenced for provocative social media posts while leading politicians face no repercussions for inflammatory public statements because they are protected by parliamentary privilege raises important questions about accountability in public life. He argues that this hypocrisy fuels further resentment and unrest. And these divisions within the Conservative Party reflect a broader ideological shift. For some... Traditional conservatives, the party's right would turn on immigration, welfare and social issues, undermines core values of pragmatism and inclusivity that form the bedrock of conservatism. They argue that while addressing illegal immigration is important, the way the message is conveyed is equally crucial to maintaining social cohesion. The Hull riots, where banners bearing the sign Stop the Boats were seen, have become a symbol of this tension. And at the grassroots level... Charities like Welcome House, which supports asylum seekers in Hull, have seen an increase in reports of racist abuse since the riots, suggesting a direct link between the heightened rhetoric and real-world harm. Bashir Siraj, the chief officer of Welcome House, has noted that incidents of racism towards migrants have increased in the wake of the unrest, illustrating how inflammatory language can have lasting effects on the lives of vulnerable individuals. And from a political perspective... This conservative backlash is a timely reminder that for a political party to maintain long-term legitimacy, it needs to find a balance between policy ambition and responsible communication. And the backlash against the rhetoric underscores the need for more moderate voices to reclaim the narrative within the Conservative Party. It doesn't matter whether you support the Conservative Party, the Labour Party, or anything else, frankly. All our parties in the United Kingdom need to maintain this balance between um, distinctive rhetoric and responsible communication. And the, the problem with the stop the boats uh, stuff is that it risks allowing populist, emotionally charged language to dominate national discourse. And as Lord Kirkhope warns, Think very carefully about the words you, choo you choose to use and how you deploy them. His advice suggests that a reckoning is taking place within the party and perhaps a broader alignment of political rhetoric is on the horizon as Britain faces the continuing challenge of managing immigration while maintaining its values of fairness and decency. My own instinct is that this needs to be done in the Home Office 
and by the Home Office civil servants actually doing their job and processing these claims. And then we can see who is and who is not an illegal migrant, who merits our help and who does not, and those who do not should must leave. They are illegal migrants. You don't define somebody as an illegal migrant simply because of the way that they cross the channel. But according to the Illegal uh, Migration Bill, according to the Nationality and Borders Bill, according to the Rwanda Bill, that is how they are currently defined. And while Sir Keir Starmer fails to remove those bills from the statute book, to repeal those bills, they remain part of our national discourse and they remain part of this rhetoric of discrimination, this rhetoric of discrimination, this abuse of language and of reality and of international and national law. We cannot define something into existence because it's convenient. If we don't like the 1951 Refugee Convention, then we need to assemble uh, an international, a global convention and redefine it. That is the mature way to approach this problem. And I think, frankly, any government that called such a meeting would be, would be thanked. The Conservative Party's internal reckoning with its right-wing anti-immigration rhetoric reveals the complexities of modern politics. And the concerns of Lord Kirkhope and others illustrate a growing awareness of the long-term social impact of populist rhetoric, highlighting the importance of measured, thoughtful dialogue as an alternative on sensitive issues like immigration. And thoughtful dialogue means looking at all aspects of an issue, not just looking at those that are convenient. But the problem with the dialogue we've been having, or not the dialogue we've been having, the the um, uh, the the the, the the dispatch box thumping that we have seen is this confusion of a statement of the problem with a very specific and very uh, invasive solution, a very aggressive solution, and the assumption that anybody who doesn't accept that solution automatically rejects the problem. And that's a logical fallacy, by the way. And Suella Braverman, James Cleverly, Rishi Sunak, uh, in fact, the majority of the, of the last cabinet were guilty of that. We wait to see whether or not Keir Starmer and his current cabinet have been infected by the same uh, absurdity about the, 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 this illusion of power. Um, but the future of the Conservative Party and arguably of British politics more broadly, and that's the point, depends on how successfully it can moderate the internal divisions and avoid the kind of extreme rhetoric that, while politically expedient in the short term, bashing the dispatch box risks long-term damage to uh, the the Conservative Party's integrity to the social cohesion of our political class and to uh, and, it, and it risks the destruction of our country and our our culture. Division and focusing on the negative is not a way forward to establish a positive society.